This video is about the um, really, really bad, um, tra traumatically bad experience I had with the orthopedic surgeon, Michael Karch, uh, whom I saw at Mammoth Hospital in Mammoth Lakes, California. Uh, he also has an office down the hill in Bishop, California, and I think he may work out on the East Coast in Virginia as well. Um, it's a pretty extensive review that I'm gonna give, and what I've done is I've written it all down to try to get through it as efficiently as I can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read what I've written down. This story actually concluded in April of 23. I waited until now because I've struggled the whole time with whether I should just accept it and try to forgive him or go public with it in the hopes of saving others from a similar experience. I'm trying to do both. I've decided that it's important for others to know. So um, acceptance and forgiveness are concepts that are very important to me. And this is where the struggle came in over the last 11 months, 10 months, um, is I want to accept and I want to forgive, but at the same time, how do we uh, take bad situations and make them better? So what I'm trying to, I'm hoping to do is uh, post this video. I hope people can find it and see it before they have a surgery with CARCH or, or uh, pursue any sort of treatment at Mammoth Hospital. And this will help you to make an informed decision on your own, okay? I'm one person, I'm just sharing my experience. Um, anything that I say in this video, especially if I you know, mention any sort of facts, please double check the facts on your own. Don't just take my, my, um, my opinion, okay? Do your own research, double check my facts. All right, so, um, oh, and you may think that um, throughout the, as I'm making this video, like I don't seem very emotional about this. Well, again, it's, it's, it's been 11 months uh, since he dropped me and I've had plenty of time to process all of the emotion. So the sadness, the disappointment, the anger has all been processed. And at this point, I'm just, um, I'm just sharing the facts. My hip had been getting worse for some time. I finally decided to pursue replacement surgery. I was a nomad, a full-time traveler. There are tens, maybe, maybe even hundreds of thousands of us living this lifestyle. And I used to spend half of the year in the Bishop Mammoth, California area. I heard that Karch had a good reputation and called his office to schedule an appointment. My first question was, what insurance does he accept? The receptionist was unable to provide me with this most basic of information, thus beginning the absolute madness of this experience call after call after call to his office and my insurance company and no two people had the same information. I was ready to quit at that point. All right, nuts. I mean, I'm a grown man. I've traveled around the country. I've been to like lots of doctor's offices and usually they have it listed right on their website, the insurances that they accept. I had insurance at the time that I initiated this phone call and I was asking if my insurance covered Karch and the receptionist said, I just need to call my insurance company and ask them. But no two people had the same information. So it was just, you know, bouncing back and forth between the two of them. It really felt like everyone was just like, you know, tossing the hot potato. Nobody wanted to deal with it. And it was so maddening that I, I nearly just threw my hands up and said, forget about the whole thing. Um, oh, and then uh, I, I tried a different approach. You know, I called the receptionist, Karch's reception and said, you know, I don't have faith in this. It doesn't look like my insurance is gonna cover this. Um, again, can you tell me what insurance programs is he a part of? Because I'll look into switching into that insurance. You know, because again, I really, I wanted to pursue this. And she said, I don't have that information for you. I'm like, oh, good grief. Um, I was then informed by someone I know that I probably qualified for financial aid. I applied and I did receive it. Great, I thought, but that turned out to be just one small hurdle in this long distance event. I made an appointment to see Karch. He appeared to be polite and professional, or so it seemed at first. That facade quickly broke down. He did answer a lot of my questions, but keep in mind that it's always the questions that you don't ask, and in general, the things not said, that will later become a problem. This is, this is true. He sent me in for x-rays. Upon returning to the exam room, he informed me that he had already put me on the schedule for surgery two weeks from that day. Not, what does your schedule look like and what does two weeks from now sound like? Does that sound right to anybody? I mean, that's not the way you do business. You know, you don't just go ahead and, 
and tell someone that something like that, you talk to them and ask them, what does your schedule look like? I have an opening in two weeks. Does that sound good to you? No, I've already put you on the schedule for surgery in two weeks. He also asked, it's your left hip, right? I replied, no, it's the right. Oh yeah, just a small mistake. Um, so the x-rays were up on the computer and I could see them. And the two hips looked pretty much the same. But I get no pain in my left hip and lots of pain in my right hip. And I asked him, why do you think that is? I don't know, they both look bad. You're gonna end up having them both replaced. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a good answer. Um, I said that I think that two weeks is too soon. I have concerns and preparations to make. He asked me what they were. I informed him that I'm a single van dwelling nomad, that I'm on disability for having bipolar disorder. I'm a regular but not heavy, four beers a day drinker. I'm really scared of prescription pain meds and I get occasional low back pain. He replied that my back looked fine on the x-rays. Don't be worried about that. We can use NSAIDs for pain management. Don't, uh, we're looking at doing surgery in two weeks, so just don't drink between now and the surgery. And uh, he said, don't worry, I'll take care of everything else. And he said, including, we're gonna find a, an in-house place for you to uh, recuperate, because we don't want you recovering in your van. Uh, and then sent me on my way. I left feeling hopeful, but a bit stunned by the speed. A couple of days later, I got a phone call from an at-home physical therapist. I informed her that I'm, that I'm a full-time traveler and don't have a, a home in the area. She said that she was not able to help me, and that was it. Um, so I said, well, that's odd. You know, Karch and I had a discussion about this. I informed him that I'm a nomad, and she said, I, I don't know. That's not what I, you know, what I do. I'm an at-home person. And I said, well, can you uh, refer me on to some place where I can recuperate in-house? No. I'm just going to call Karch's office, tell them I can't do it, and it's going to be up to them to contact you and follow up on this, which they never did. That phone call from her, which is the wrong person, was the one and only phone call I ever received from any of Karch's staff uh, during this entire thing. And that was it. That was the extent of Karch taking care of everything. So I called his office, uh, called his office and told them that I needed to postpone the surgery. Okay, again, that shouldn't be on me. I shouldn't have to do that. But I, I don't know what's going on, you know, after the surgery, you know. So somehow or another, the whole thing just got dumped in my lap. I had no idea where I was going to rehab, for how long, and how I was going to get there. I honestly feel that Karch simply had an opening in his schedule, and he rushed me into it just to keep it full. Patient care first, money second, right? This led to more frustrating phone calls, to his office, the hospital, and the Bishop Care Center, where I was hoping to recuperate. So right off the bat, that was me, okay? I took the initiative to contact that place because I've been spending like eight years in that area, and as far as I know, that's the only place between uh, Bishop and Mammoth that offer a longer-term um, place to, to recover. Maybe Karch knows of someplace else. If he does, he never shared it with me, okay? But I contacted them, okay? I'm left taking care of everything, which is what Karch said he was going to do. Once again, no two people had the same information. Bishop Care Center said that the hospital or Karch's office can provide transportation from Mammoth to Bishop, but both Mammoth Hospital and Karch's office said they couldn't. Everyone is quick to say that you can begin walking within 24 hours of the surgery, but no one had mentioned that I can't drive for six weeks. More information that I found on my own digging around on the internet. Uh, which I later on had confirmed by Karch, but you know, not not during that initial office visit when we're trying to set this all up. Uh, and he and he confirmed it after I brought it up. Okay, didn't didn't say it on his own. Rather important information for a van dwelling nomad. There are no taxis, Uber, or Lyft in that area, and the bus service is known to be unreliable and doesn't go directly between Mammoth Hospital and Bishop Care Bishop Care Center. So in neither of the towns of Mammoth Lake lakes or bishop there's no taxi cabs there's no uber there's no lyft and there's uh, none of that going between the two towns great post hip replacement surgery let me push myself around town in a wheelchair carrying uh, 20 days worth of luggage again 20 days i got that information from bishop care center they said the medicare would cover uh, 20 days and after that i would be on my own and it gets to be very expensive you know after that and 
again, I'm thinking, well, what am I supposed to do between 20 days and six weeks? No one ever had any information about that. With each phone call that I made seeking essential information, the more annoyed everyone became with me. Apparently, the system is set up to keep the patient as ill-informed as possible. Just shut up and pay. Karch was clearly annoyed that I was postponing the surgery. His precious schedule may now have a gap in it. I only saw Karch in person once. After that, we had three phone consults where his thin veneer of polite professionalism quickly vanished. Always go in person if you can. Okay, this is super important. If Even after uh, watching this video, you just decide on your own that you want to pursue surgery um, with him. Don't ever do phone consults. Okay, I saw him that one time uh, in his office and there were other people in the room the whole time. And I think that he just wanted to you know, look good in front of his peers. So he was so much better behaved in person than on the phone. His behavior is much better when there are other people watching. When I shared how disappointed I was in him, that he told me that he would take care of everything, then in fact took care of absolutely nothing, I could hear his seething over the phone. When I let him know that I do my own fact checking online, the seething got worse. Okay, that's actually a, a miswording. Okay, it wasn't even fact checking, it was fact finding. Okay, I know someone who had had a hip replacement with Karch, and he took a class before the surgery where they teach you everything you could ever want to know about hip replacements and then give you time to ask all your questions. I was never offered a class. Okay, I got a handout, you know, some, some paper, you know, stapled together, but I was never offered a class. So I had to just gather all this information on my own, you know, trying to educate myself on a hip replacement. Note to all doctors, everyone checks your facts online these days. We are all doing our best to be part of our own health care. Accept this and deal with it. This is not the 1950s anymore when doctors were the only source of medical information. Some of the facts that I found were mitigating post-surgery pain with non-opioid painkillers is usually ineffective, meaning the NSAIDs, meaning most people end up taking the opioid painkillers, which are often prescribed as strengths and for durations that can cause addiction. People with mental health problems have a significantly higher rate of complications post-surgery and the fact that I can't drive for six weeks after surgery. Karch never mentioned any of these. In fact, he never mentions any negatives, only positives, leaving me to research the negatives on my own and then getting upset with me when I bring them up. Rather than discussing these validated concerns and trying to ease my fears with his own facts, he just upped his attitude. Okay, this was a really important point in the whole thing. Okay, this is where he could have kind of like manned up or just been, you know, professional and said something along the lines of, hey, you know what? I dropped the ball on this. I'm sorry. Let me just give you all this information, you know, that it is that you need. But no, all he did was, you know, just up his attitude. Uh, he could, or he could have said something like, you know what, th these phone consults don't seem to be working for the two of us. Why don't you book an in-person appointment and again, we'll go over this stuff and I'll give you the, all the information you need. No, nothing along, again, I, I'm not putting words in his mouth, but nothing along those lines. All he did was like increase his attitude and I never got information on these three things. Going back to the office visit, okay, I had mentioned the opioids and he countered with we can do NSAIDs. But then I said, I saw a research article, or actually several research articles, that said that you know NSAIDs alone aren't enough. So I'm still dealing with uh, like a very serious fear of these medications. And you know he didn't like come back with his own information. He just got angry. Um, has he ever done a hip replacement surgery on someone with a mental illness? And how do they recover? Did they have any extenuating circumstances? Any additional problems? Never mentioned it, okay? Six weeks, can't drive. What am I supposed to do between 20 days and six weeks? Never mentioned it. By this time, the entire spring and summer had passed with nothing gained but frustration. I still wanted slash had to, pr to pursue the surgery, but it was time to head south for the winter. The following spring, um, okay, so I did end up having one more phone consult, and again, it just went poorly. I tried bringing up a, a technique where you can have um, lubricant injected into the hip. He countered uh, with cortisone. I said I have concerns with cortisone. That got him upset. Um, again, it just ended poorly, and I just ended up leaving for the season. Uh, but still, you know, the, the last thing, you know, I, I did have a contact with his receptionist. 
because uh, he wanted to, to try to stick me in for this cortisone stuff, which I, I didn't want to do. So I called his receptionist and said, I'm not going to do that, but I still plan on coming back in the spring. I'm going to do whatever I can over the winter to get healthy, as healthy as I can, and we'll pursue this again in the spring. The following spring, I had another phone consult with Karch. He was clearly done with me at this point. He asked me why I wanted him to do the surgery. I replied that he has a good reputation. Okay, I'll go down to Yuma, Arizona for the winters. Now, I have a, uh, a, north, uh, not, I have a, um, a dermatologist that I see down there. Now, I know it's completely different you know, types of medicine, but he's a doctor. So I just asked him, I said, do you know of any good orthopedic surgeons here in Yuma that you could refer me to because I need a hip replacement? And he just laughed. He was like, oh, God, no. You don't want to have that done around here. He goes, that's major surgery. That's big city stuff. You don't want to do that around here. So again, I'm thinking, you know, Karch has got this great reputation. He works on Olympiads, you know, so I'm just gonna stick with what, um, you know, it's super frustrating. I, I don't know why there's just like the few pieces of the puzzle that need to be put together and why no one's giving me these pieces, but I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with Karch. He's supposedly the man and I'm gonna follow it through, okay? So that's why I, I wanted him to do it. Um, I replied that he has a good reputation and I, I let him know that I had invested so much infuriating time over the last year gathering up whatever information I had that I didn't have the mental or emotional strength to start all over again somewhere else. And that was absolutely true. Okay. I mean, again, right now I'm feeling pretty neutral about everything, but I was, I was wrung out by the experience. Um, in, in my life, especially having bipolar disorder, the single, like throughout most of my life, um, stressful events in my life have been trying to get help with the medical community. It's always just maddening how difficult they make everything, you know, and to the point where it just seems to me to be downright corrupt somehow. I can't exactly put my finger on why. But so during this experience, I mean, I was just making phone calls all the time. Every phone call was like a kick in the stomach because of the bad attitudes that I received from everyone that I had to talk to. And then in addition to their bad attitudes, they had no information, okay? So it was, it was a real struggle and I just didn't have it in me to go start all over again somewhere else. He told me that he wasn't comfortable working with me. He said he was concerned with my back my weight, which is about 30 pounds over at the time, and my drinking. Okay, um, my back. During our um, office you know, visit, the season before, I told him that I occasionally get low back pain, and he told me, your back looks fine on the x-rays to me, I wouldn't worry about it, okay? My weight. Yeah, I wasn't happy about being 30 pounds over. You know, the athlete in me wasn't happy about that, but, I had already lost a lot of function in my hip and I just wasn't able to get the amount of exercise I need to keep myself fit, okay? And 30 pounds is a bummer, but in a world where 300 pounds is getting to be pretty normal, I don't think 30 pounds is enough to cancel a surgery over. And my drinking, it was the same. If anything, it was a little bit less than the last time I talked to him. I was still drinking kind of like around four beers a day, you know, maybe not every single day, you know, so like I cut down a little bit. None of these three things had him the least bit concerned. When I saw him for that office appointment, he just threw me onto a schedule for two weeks after, after I saw him. None of which had him at all concerned when he booked me for surgery two weeks after our first meeting. I was dumbstruck. I had not done anything wrong. It was him and his inept staff that had caused any problems. After an absolutely painstaking year of gathering on my own, whatever information that I had come up with, that was it. He wasn't going to do the surgery. He just dropped me. So thanks for nothing, Karch. I can now barely walk and I'm in constant pain. My lifestyle, though, was once very, very active. I'm a black belt in karate. I bicycle toured around New Zealand. I used to be a bicycle courier in both um, Sydney, Australia and Boston, Massachusetts. I hiked half of the Pacific Crest Trail, um, just meaning that I was just always very active, you know, throughout my whole life had been a very, very active person, is now reduced to sitting around doing absolutely nothing all day. Along the way, I had informed Karch that extensive physical exercise was the only effective way of managing my bipolar disorder. Without it, my mental health really suffered. 
Unfortunately, this was the last of a long history of receiving bad health care, much of it at the Mammoth Hospital. It was also by far the most egregious lack of health care that I had ever received. I am left with zero confidence in the medical community. Now I've decided that life truly is not worth living. Karch, I hope that this shakes you up enough to change the way that you treat people. That's it. I'm not asking for you to be fired. I'm just asking you to improve. Okay, my understanding is that he's a good surgeon. I wouldn't know. I didn't have surgery with him. But that means he has skills that are beneficial to society. So I would not want to like take that away from society. Okay, so I'm not asking for this guy to be let go, but I am asking you to improve. Okay, you may have good surgeon skills, but you need to work on your human skills. In case anyone reads this and thinks, well, that guy was just crazy, please keep these facts in mind. I never did anything wrong. All I did was advocate for my own care when I was put in the position where I had to advocate for my care because he and his staff didn't do what they were supposed to do. I informed Karch of my bipolar disorder during our first meeting. One in five Americans have some kind of mental illness. Doctors, especially Karch, need to learn how to treat this demographic. And just because someone has a mental illness does not make that person stupid or wrong. In fact, many people with mental illness are considered higher in intelligence than average. My wish is that, it will, that this video will put a much needed spotlight on the very, very broken healthcare system that we are forced to endure here in America. This could have been avoided if Karch and or the administrators of Mammoth Hospital had simply dropped their attitudes, listened to me, and simply provided me with the information that I needed. That's it. If that had been done, had been done I wouldn't be sitting here right now making this video. I'd have a new hip, maybe two new hips, and I'd be off hiking someplace right now. But instead, I'm left completely despondent, okay? I have no way of managing my bipolar disorder, and my body has completely quit on me. Um, final example, just the other day, okay, so I have to like hobble around with a cane now, okay? And it's painful, okay? So forget about exercise. I don't get any exercise anymore. And I used to exercise a lot, like most of the day, I would be out, outdoors doing things. Now, zero exercise. I hobble around on a cane. All I do is once or twice a day, I can get from my van into a store to get some food and hobble back out again. And yesterday or the day before, it was humiliating. I went into to Walmart, and because it's such a big store, I actually got on one of those little scooters, you know, that you have to like buzz yourself around the store with. Yeah, how would that make you feel? I'm only 56 years old, okay? Not 96. I should still be very, very active. And instead, I'm, I'm reduced to buzzing myself around Walmart in one of these little scooters. It's humiliating, okay? So Karch in particular, and all of the administrators at Mammoth Hospital, you have serious improvements that you need to make. I am not saying that you just need to make a little tweak here, a little adjustment there. No, top to bottom, you have major changes that you need to make. First and foremost, drop those crazy bad attitudes that you all have. You're a hospital. You're doctors and nurses for crying out loud. It's no place for a bad attitude. You're dealing with sick people. What's wrong with you? Okay, so drop your crazy bad attitude. Get organized. The medical profession in hospitals are meant to be like the epitome of professionalism. Instead, your average McDonald's is run better than this place. Okay, and work on your, your, your human interpersonal skills. You know, get some bedside manner, learn how to communicate with people. So, that's it. Um, I hope this helps. You know, again, I'm one person sharing my experience with you. Um, and just want to finish with, uh, I, I really, I, I, I hope to God that you take this video seriously and you all make these, the significant improvements that you all need to make um, and start providing people with the horrible, horrible care that you're providing them with at that facility.